Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Good afternoon, everyone. We are TPM. You, you guys are watching TPM X My Drone Tech Festival 2020. And together with me again, uh, Mr. William Elvis uh, from yeah. Mudas. So together with us, he will be sharing about the role of JUPAM that uh, plays in UAV and national security. And I think this is a really, really important topic that we need to share with everyone. And I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful for, for Mudas uh, to be able to share with the audience today. All right? Very welcome, Juan. Uh, hi, guys. Once again, I'm back with you guys. And uh, this time, we're talking about JUPAM. Now, uh, you may be wondering uh, who is JUPAM, what is JUPAM, why do we need JUPAM permits? But, you know, uh, I used to be engaged in uh, flying in uh, with, with helicopters before. and. <coughs> Having uh, permits uh, under JUPAM is nothing really new. A lot of uh, drone pilots feel it's new, but it's nothing really new. I just want to show you this slide. We go back to uh, onto our slides and uh, let's look at this. Yep. Uh, this may feel like it's a spaghetti. It, this may look like it's a spaghetti of things that you need to do as a drone operator to be able to fly in, in Malaysia. It is so complicated for a lot of people. And I agree with you, like I mentioned just now about the CAM. And uh, I will try to make this easier by showing you this next slide here. Maybe this is slightly easier for you to understand the application for the permanent process here. As you can see here, there are many, many logos out there. But primarily, if you look at the top line there, you see uh, uh, JUPAM is in the middle, and of course, uh, CEM, and, and it's basically the, the route or the road for you to get your uh, permit approved, for you to do uh, work, uh, aerial work uh, for your drone operation. If you take a step back, if you look at SKMM just now, uh, Sarah was uh, explaining the importance of of uh, SKMM to have the certificate for your drones so that you'll be covered under the frequency spectrum. And it's a prerequisite. It is, it is, it is something a lot of drone operators do not have that. So if you do not have that, there is a remedy. Uh, we actually, MUDAS, we're trying to help the, the drone operators to be able to uh, get their drones that you have bought locally that has not been certified. We'll work, because we're working uh, now closely with Sirim to get prerequisites for that. The next, uh, the next uh, slide there, we have uh, uh, CGSO there, and also uh, have a box there that says location permission. Now, CGSO is the Chief Government Security Office, and actually this is under uh, any assets of the government or sensitive areas that, that do need certain additional uh, permissions. You know, you, for instance, you just can't go into uh, areas like Protrujaya or you can't go into areas like uh, dams or, or sensitive areas without uh, CGSO's, uh, uh, what do you call it, permission. And the next box uh, below that, it says uh, location permission. In other words, a prerequisite as well to be able to have what we call surat sokongan. That means uh, location permission from the landowners that you are actually undertaking to, to take the aerial photo off. So then we look at JUPAM, you can see JUPAM, the logo there is pretty much centralized. So JUPAM coordinates for this and does a level of security checks uh, with the, the, the police, basically to check you guys out, see whether you guys are uh, legit and you do not have any, any criminal record, and also to check the, the number of uh, uh, locations that you want to fly. So they are very, very important. I'll go into the details of who actually uh, handles the permits for, for JUPAM under that part there. And of course, when all your ducks in a row are completed and you get the JUPAM permit, you will then apply for the CEM. So CEM is actually the last stop. And just now, as I mentioned, it has a, a long uh, list of things that, that they are looking at. But primarily, CEM is only interested in airspace safety. So wherever you fly, you have to be safe. And once everything is completed, you will be then issued with an approved permit. So this is basically uh, the route for getting that. So now if you look at JUPAM in its, in its uh, entirety here, uh, JUPAM is actually a department, uh, what do you call it, an uh, agency, a uh, department under the Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources. All right. It is being, there's a lot of words there, basically it's saying that it's been there a long, long time. 
And uh, the important thing to recognize here is that everything is governed by uh, a particular circular. It's called the Perkeliling Ang Bilangan Town 2007. This is under the Prime Minister's Department, uh, certified in 2007. And what it basically says is that, the, in, a, in a way, that the code of conduct. So whatever uh, permits you need to do, if you're asking why do I need to do this, this is the reason why it's part of the uh, what call it, the, 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 the circular, circulars that has, that's come out. So this is very, very important. And again, I can't stress enough, JUPEM actually undertakes the responsibility of ensuring national security. In other words, in the old days, you have uh, a lot of people taking images from the from from the air and misusing it, or or, set, or using it in different countries or whatever. So as a matter of national security, JUPEM actually undertakes that responsibility. And uh, within JUPEM itself, there's a unit that's called uh, BGSP. And uh, BGSP is actually um, part of the army. Uh, they are actually military intelligence and they are, they are the ones who actually do the vetting of all the permits. So I actually uh, have been doing permits with uh, BGSP since 1989 and uh, it, is, it is all army guys. Uh, they, are, they, they are in army uniform and they are, they are very, very particular about um, the national uh, security of our country. So that's very good to have it. And uh, I, what do you call it? I think this is very important. It helps us uh, to keep uh, our, our country safe in terms of uh, the permits that we do. All right, so I uh, have, uh, uh, what do you call it? This slide here, basically uh, how Japan will coordinate uh, the process we have BGSP, they will actually send uh, your, your materials and they, they'll send information back to PDRM and if necessary, uh, coordinate with CGSO for matters of uh, security. It is related to government assets. So this is how they actually work. So the screening is very, very important. And uh, this is a very old form. It's called the PPN 130. And this is the form that we use to fill up manually and we fill it up in triplicate and then we will actually process it, send in for processing. So it's a very complicated form. Uh, but right now, uh, Japan has renewed, uh, made it easy for the industry. And I'm going to do a selling job on, on what they're actually doing right now. Um, we're calling it the EBIS uh, Japan Ge Geo Portal. All right, how to fill this form in? But before we go into that, uh, this is how it looks. It's an EBIS uh, Japan e business. So for all of you guys who are thinking of applying for permits with Japan, you need to go to the EBIS for Japan e business and go to the Geo Portal, and they'll have uh, a step-by-step -step method of how to actually apply for permits. And the beauty about this is that you can do this all online. And this is the wonderful thing. You can make the application online and also pay online. And I want to share with you this video on what they have done. You can actually uh, see how it goes. So this is the Pandafran uh, Pangguna Lua. All right. So the landing page is where you come here. First of all, you have to log in and register yourself. And once you register, you become a new registrant. They will then send back, um, you put in all your personal particulars. You can see that. And after that, you will get uh, the information you have. You put in your email as well. They have a lot of passwords. It's very much uh, encrypted and password protected. It is a very, very good online. It is so easy. Uh, anyone uh, can actually use it. This is something that the industry uh, really, really uh, appreciates. I know I do. I do a lot of uh, 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 permit applications for uh, commercial operators and I encourage them. I help them a bit, but I also encourage them to do it themselves. And this is something that is very easy. So once you finish, you register and you got a um, clear uh, Burjaya, Pendaftaran Burjaya, then they'll email to you for verification. Once they email the verification to your email, then you verify it, and then you will get 
the officially registered. Then you go back into this, key in your password, they will give you a verification password key. You go into this and now you can do the application. It's as simple as that. All right, so you log in here, click accept, put in your details, your frasa, your, what do you call it, all, all your key panel words that you want to put in. And once you are in, you are basically good to go. Then you will have to update your information. They'll ask you a little bit more information. Now the information they will ask you is basically on your personal particulars and also your company particulars. So this is the dashboard that you see in front of you. Once you're here, you can actually uh, be in control of the number of permits that you do. It has a payment system, very simple. A lot of people cannot say they don't know how to do this already because it's out there. Please go to this, uh, if you need to email them directly, the information is there. Mm -hmm. And this, this video was done by, by Jupem. So I highly uh, recommend. recommend that you all go to this website. And then uh, just to go in this uh, website, I want to show you a bit of screen grabs here. In, in the geo portal, you go to the uh, Pergambaran U Permit Udara, and then you can go into your dashboard from here you can then apply for your permits. So this is how, uh, this is a list of permits that I've applied before. So I have, I can actually check uh, wh where I've uh, applied for. And again, you for every uh, job that you do, you apply. So your details will be in, and you see here your personal details, your company details, your corporate details, a lot of things they want to know about you, and also your the supporting letters, that you need to include and also the type of uh, drone that you're using and also where you're flying, your location, all these are important. So William, I, I got a question yeah. so because when, when I see companies applying for this, mm. so are uh, only commercial uh, companies that needs to apply? So if, what, what if you are a freelancer, so you don't have a registered company, but you still are doing a, a, a mapping job, for example. So do you still need to apply for, for Japan uh, permits? You do, you do. You see, um, JUPEM uh, makes it uh, compulsory for anyone who goes up on any aerial platform. Before it used to be helicopters, but if any aerial platform, you will still need to undertake the application. That is that is key. The reason for this is because um, this is this is part of the law, and we have to actually follow and comply with it. If you don't do it then action can be taken against you. At the same time, at the end of the day, when you get the permit, it is, when you, when you, when you fly, you have peace of mind to know that you're, you have the permit. And uh, I just want to talk to you about the cost of, of each mm -hmm. permit. Each permit only costs uh, 50 ringgit per day. And Japan has been uh, having this uh, for like forever. And uh, it, is a, it is a very uh, reasonable amount, we feel, However, if you have, uh, um, uh, if you're doing uh, work with the government projects or whatever, there could be some exemptions involved. Like if you're doing for for many months or whatever for aerial survey, you can go and and uh, appeal mm -hmm. and write a letter and you see how they whether they will give you any any cost reduction or whatever. But that's totally you have to ask the the big the, the 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 people in Japan itself. So as you see here. You you have to put in uh, a lot of uh, PDF files on your on your on your drone specs and also your details or and your Borang SSM your Borang Nine actually and uh, whatever relevant materials that you have even if if you have any uh, what do you call it uh, what do you call it supporting letters to say that you are an existing uh, drone pilot and you have some certificate, certificates that you have on yourself, you can also accompany any uh, accompanying letters in here. Uh, if you're doing uh, projects um, in town, for instance, uh, I'd like to uh, indicate that if you're doing a particular building or a development, you need to get uh, a letter of, uh, what do you call it, a confirmation letter from your client. That's very important. And the second one would be the permission letter of whoever uh, owns the properties. 
And sometimes if you're doing it in the city, in the city, like you say that I don't know who is owning which property, if it's in a city or municipal area, you need to go to the municipal count, council or uh, Dewan Bandarayas and you need to get special permissions from, from them. It's all there, it's all mapped out. Uh, any further information if you need, you can you can uh, contact uh, Mudas, you can contact us and we can try to help you get be compliant. That I think is the very, very important thing. And this is the journey that you need to do, like what I showed you just now, where you have uh, get all all your 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 surat sokongan, all your, your supporting letters in place and submit to them. Normally, uh, in terms of time of mm, duration, duration of application, now this could be complicated, all right? Um, normally, JUPEM officially requires 14 days. But if you compare uh, JUPEM and CEM, now JUPEM are encouraging you to actually give as much lead time as you can. I know it's difficult, industry is difficult because sometimes when you got a job, you just want to go and fly. Mm -hmm. But you, you, you got to plan, plan ahead. I keep telling uh, a lot of my, my uh, fellow drone operator friends, they need, if you can have a minimum of 21 days, that would be ideal. So that is something that we need to to uh... understood, and I, and I think uh, when when you talk about you know, moving forward in the future, I think the the government, the agencies like us, you know, agencies like uh, Futurize, for example, we are, we are actually working together, and getting inputs from from industry players, and we know that you know that the industry players needs to do the job, you know, there and then as fast as we can. But I think for, for, for the regulators to be able to come up with, you know, uh, uh, systems with uh, newer regulations, you, they need more data to be able to, to decide, you know, how long or, or how much uh, system that you need to do. Yes. You know, eventually, we need to get to work together with the regulators by providing whatever information that we have at this point of time. And I highly believe within the next. 12 to 24 months, we'll be having a, a better system, you know, yeah. we'll try to reduce the number of days needs yeah. to be taken to get the approval. Absolutely right. The key, the key question right now that all the industry uh, partners talk about is basically how long will it take to do the permit? I can't, you know, I can't give a, a, a timing. I can only help in the submission, the process and everything. But sometimes when the uh, submission goes in, then they look at the dates and then they come back to us. And then, you know, there are things that are mm -hmm. that needs to be updated or changed. So sometimes, sometimes I get a tempo tamal. I also get headaches or so sometimes <laughs> try to help out some of the Understood. Because one thing I, re I understand, um, I would, I would uh, appeal to the, to the supporting uh, agencies to, uh, that bring all the permits, could be CM, all the supporting agencies, to really... Uh, feel for the industry because they are also they, they have deadlines to meet and a lot of times um, it is difficult because of the timing and we could be losing a, a lot of uh, projects uh, that's coming down to Malaysia because it's too difficult to do uh, permits and things like that. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to address that. I'm trying to help the industry to say that whatever you have, just do it here. You know, mm -hmm. don't take your business outside. Uh, stay in Malaysia because it's very important, especially FDI. We get a lot of uh, what they call it uh, movies from Hollywood, like uh, the Crazy Rich Asian. Uh, is it Crazy Rich Asian that movie yeah. that was done here in in uh, in Malaysia? In Malaysia. <laughs> and uh, very good for the industry. And uh, we get a lot of uh, uh, China productions, uh, Hong Kong productions coming in as well. Um, there was pre uh, pre pre COVID time. But we need to bring that back because this is all um, FDI coming, uh, direct foreign direct investments is coming in. Mm -hmm. We gotta support that. So I would appeal to the to the agencies to look into the timing. Uh, everything now is done online, so maybe we could hasten the process. I mean, um, I remember someone saying that sometimes it takes uh, f uh, fourteen days to to process a, a permit, say for instance. But now with 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 all the technology that we has, have, we, we should be able to cut that down within uh, uh, three days to have a reasonable period of time, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But then again, it's, it's, it's all about uh, coming together and can't emphasize this enough to have a one-stop agency to actually handle all these uh, submissions to make 
it easier for industry to, to actually operate. All right, uh, just one more part. Can we uh, go to the slides again? Um, I want to show you the, you also have to submit um, the map of your area. Go to Google Earth and submit work, uh, provide a KMZ file. So this is something that, uh, for instance, in every location, this is an example of a screen grab of mine, which I did recently. Any area that you need to actually uh, undertake, you need to highlight the four uh, GPS points. This is the information that we need to give for JUPEM. But earlier in my session, which I showed uh, uh, under the CM, CM actually requires the buffer zone and everything, because there's airspace safety. Whereas uh, Japan just wants to know where you're flying in which which uh, operating area. So for the for the CM one, you actually need to provide sixteen points. Here you just need uh, four points. All right. So then to the next slide here. One thing good about this is that whatever we submit, we'll get uh, the what do you call it uh, feedback from the officer in charge, uh, mm -hmm. and they will come back to us. Well, whether our, our permit is incomplete or needs to be to be added uh, certain things, you know, this is the wonderful thing about it. At the end of the day, this is how an approved permit looks like. All right. So that's my, I think, on... on okay, let, let's try to highlight on this part as well. Yeah, I'm going to bring this in again. <laughs> I showed this just now. Um, you, you guys uh, have to be compliant. I think that's important. Uh, I took this out from, from CEM again, and, and there's a lot of uh, penalties there existing, and there's a lot of uh, uh, dollar signs and jail time included. So uh, the short take of it is that go and get your permits done because you are a commercial drone operator. You need to raise your standard you need to raise your game. If you are engaging with a company, they will definitely want you to have the necessary permits as well because they as well have to be compliant because they are the clients. So you have to look out for them and uh, be compliant. All right. So I won't read out the, the numbers here, but you know, it ranges in two, two years or three years and then the fines can go up to 80,000. So <laughs> you, you have to be careful about this one. Got it, got it. I think, I think that there's a lot to take in and for, yeah. for those who are just coming into the industry. I think there's a lot of things that you need to know and, and study as well. Yeah. You've you got regulations on JUPAM, you've got regulations by CAM, you've yeah. got regulations by MCMC, and then the certification done by CIRIM. And, and, and I think this is done because, you know, the, the airspace industry, you know, it's, it's something very regulated. Yeah. Because if anything happens, you know, repercussions are really, really bad. You know, and, and touch wood, yeah. nothing has happened so far. And hopefully for, we, we, we can advocate, you know, to everyone to maintain safety in this industry so that everyone can benefit from the good things that we can use drones, you know, for commercialization purpose. Exactly. Be safe, be compliant. Uh, the last thing we want are uh, drone accidents. This is something uh, to me is unacceptable. Uh, we, we need to have uh, zero uh, incidents and the, the public will not accept uh, drone accidents, you know. They are very critical and if the public is critical, then it goes back to the agencies who are responsible and then they'll hammer down. So you, you, you just cannot fly in, in certain areas, especially in zones, airports, things like that. You have to be very, very careful on how you fly. All right, uh, before we go, I, I got a last question, uh, which, a good question from Richard Kerr, asking about, so for example, agriculture drones, you don't have a uh, camera on board. So how, how does that work? For a good question, Richard. For, for, the, for JUPAM, actually, what they say is that if you have an imaging uh, sensor, that, that's on board your camera, you have to have a JUPAM permit. But if you do not have any uh, imaging sensor, then they, they actually can exempt you. But right now, uh, like the... Well, what was the practice normally at this point of time? The, the practice right now, uh, let's put it this way, the new uh, agricultural drones right now, especially the Agras, I think they, mm -hmm. they are fitted in with the sensors now for the cameras. And when I say, when I say the... For, for Japan, it doesn't mean just imaging. It could be on thermal, 
it, those are they consider it as sensors as well. If you think lidar, all these are actually collecting data, and Japan is very what do you call it particular. If you're collecting data, you need to permit. Understood. Important. Understood. Understood. I think I think if if I can summarize this, yeah. so this drone industry, you know, all these drone uh, tools, applications, so this is still in development. So yeah. it is still a new thing. And of course, you know, uh, regulators being regulators, so there are some 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 things that we need to work with them to ensure that you know the the regulators keep up with the technology that's available right now. Yeah. And I think from from our side, which is, this is the re initial reason why we are doing this uh, drone tech initiative as well as you know this. Uh, drone tech festival mm -hmm. to actually get all the drone industry players to come together, you know, to help agencies like us, yeah. you know, uh, agencies like MDAC, Magic, Futurize, you know, and all the regu regulators as well, yeah. because we need all your support, all your data, all your information, and from from all these recommendations that we get, you know, we'll be able to meet up with all these regulators and to recommend to them. You know, what does the industry wants and needs? Yeah. And, and from there, at least you know, we can justify that this is something important for us to do and we need to do it fast. Definitely, you know, on, on that point, we, just a last word in here. Uh, CAM will be announcing sometime, uh, something very soon to actually uh, um, enlarge on the points that they've given in, from July. So this is something exciting for us. We are waiting with bated breath and uh, we, we hope to see more information and on the regulatory requirements and uh, I will just wrap on that, I think. All right, all right. Thank you so much, William. Uh, thank you so much, everyone uh, watching at home. And, and we will we will come back uh, at 2 o'clock to, to continue our session. We have three other sessions, uh, which is a presentation by Technology Park Malaysia and a sharing session by MDAC as well. And one final panel session uh, together with few panelists uh, after our two hour break. So hopefully we can see you guys back uh, because of the current pandemic situation. We are bringing you this session live together with us today from uh, STEM, STEM, STEM for All, all Maker Space uh, in Daman Mall, USJ. So hopefully after this pandemic is done, you, know, you guys can come and visit us here. But there's a lot of great things ongoing here right now. And if you, you guys want to meet up with MUDAS members, if you want to become a MUDAS member yes. and learn more about the industry, work together with agencies like MDAC, TPM, and other agencies involved in this My Drone Tech initiative. You must you must write into us. Our membership, exactly. Our membership is only 50 ringgit a year. <laughs> All right. Uh, we registration 50 ringgit. So it, it's, it's very, very uh, accessible. And we invite uh, anyone who is interested to be members, just send, uh, send us an email and then we'll reply to you. Uh, Alright, uh, thank you so much. We will be back and I will see you after lunch. So thank you so much. Do come and join us back on TPM X My Drone Tech Festival 2020. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum and goodbye. Thanks.